Ooh, okay. Welcome, everybody. It's uh, April the 1st, 2019. This is the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. Uh, I'm your host, Alan Shaw. Um, if you're here, click on the CritPad link and uh, add your name to the attendees list uh, so that we know who's here for, for, for the future people who look at these notes, <laughs> I guess. You know. um, anyway, um, cool. Attendees, we've got a note taker, Jacob, again. Thank you very much. Um, let's do what we do always. Uh, and we go through uh, a round of uh, updates where we all tell each other what we did last week and uh, what we're going to do this week and what we're currently blocked on so that we can unblock each other and make some progress. Cool. Uh, so I will start at the top of the list. Uh, if you haven't already put your weekly update in, please add it now um, and we'll get to you. Uh, and if you add it at the bottom, then you might have more time to add it. <laughs> uh, cool. So first up is Vashko. Would you like to share with us your weekly update, please? Yeah, of course. Uh, so last week I've been working mostly in the uh, supporting near form with the visual edition tool. Uh, basically, I've been working with role uh, in the introspection data model for LibHP, and I also uh, created a, a repo for uh, JavaScript with uh, LibHP introspection. That is currently heavily work in progress, but I needed to have an initial implementation of that with the switch so that uh, I could instrument JS yes, uh with it and collect data from uh, a running JSIPFS yes, node to provide some uh, real data to Nearform, which uh, will be useful for them to understand what type of data they can have uh, in the UI. Other than that, uh, I, I was working in the Lipid Printer up, mostly uh, finishing some details in, uh, in PRs and waiting for reviews. Yes, and with that, the PubSub uh, uh, DIM and VRs and the interop are ready and released. So the, the PubSub uh, interop tests are now in master. And uh, also the DHT ones for uh, peer routing and content routing. Uh, we are still missing the content fetching. And it, I, it is blocked right now because of uh, uh, we need to basically add the, configuration, uh, adjacent configuration to both demons and with that uh, also add validators and selectors for the DHT customable through the config. Uh, I also did uh, a pull request for interrupt because uh, we in the in, in the Lipidiman and the Lipidiman client we changed from using uh, Unix socket paths to multi others instead, and I needed to update the interrupt as well. Uh, so uh, this week, uh, I want to uh, get the streams interrupt tests uh, PR reviewed with that Mantas is working on. He, he has uh, some problems with that. I've been talking with him, and maybe I will have to help him as well to finish it. Uh, then I, I need to continue the GS Lipid Speed Introspection uh, uh, repo that I'm still working on, and uh, hopefully uh, Q2 planning for GS Lipid Speed. That's everything from me. Any questions or comments or other things? Okay. Uh, it's, sorry, yeah, the introspection, it's so that. What is that doing? That that basically looks at what's going on in libp 2 p and then reports it to. Like, does it run yeah, uh, files no, or something or like what? No, what? no, no. Basically, it, it uh, is like an aggregated state of all the the state and metrics that we want to get for, out of libp 2 p to expose for the in this case for the network visualization. But we are also working with the testbed people, and we are like converging all the data that we need for all the use cases. And basically that uh, module is responsible for holding that data. And then uh, we are still deciding with what will be the, the way to proceed. But uh, uh, I think the, from now the, the idea is to expose, uh, expose an endpoint in the LPGP daemon, which will allow us to get the data from out the outside world. Will it be in lip p by default, or will it just be something no, no. you add? It's yeah. just a, it's just a flag in the lip p All right, okay. Any other questions for Vashko? Okay, cool. Uh, if there's no questions, then let's move on. Uh, I, it, it's me next. Uh, so, 
uh, what have I done? Okay, ha, okay. So I helped uh, help debug and open a PR for uh, there's a there was a duplicate variable there was a duplicate function declaration actually in stream to pull stream. It's just basically the same function defined twice, but the, only the second one wins. I think so. Um, so I just removed it, but that was problematic because. Uh, it meant that, well, what was happening is Babel released a new version of uh, of itself uh, with a change that meant that if you had duplicate variable declarations, it would throw and not build your thing, uh, which meant that all our browser builds in CI were fail were breaking um, just because th this had been updated and it was an in range um, version update. Uh, and so, yeah, I had to track that down and fix it. So that's uh, that's done and dusted. Um, secondly, bundle size, uh, they PRs got merged into JSIPFS. Uh, the bundle size in the latest release candidate is about 26% smaller than V33. Um, I took that version as opposed to V34 because that was when um, Hugo basically started working on it and we actually saw some um, some gains already, um, but in total from from when we started working on it, we've saved about 26%, um, which is super cool. Um, uh, and then working towards the 0.35 JS IPFS release with DHT, um, we've been working. We've been, or well, you may know that we've been having problems with like 100% CPU usage, uh, and it's just uh, the B2B has never had that many peers to dial before. Um, so there's been a kind of per peer dial queue implemented in the P2P switch. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was reviewing that and, uh, and that, that's largely solved the problem. And we've got a new problem, which means we've got too few peers now, which is kind of, we've gone too far the other way. <laughs> uh, so hopefully that will be um, resolved pretty soon as well. Um, I was at the Lisbon Hack and Plan um, event uh, doing retrospecting and defining OKRs last week. Um, Ollie wrote up a great, um, a great write up of the event. Um, go and have a look. Um, and then, other than that, I've been I've been musing on what it means to stream with async iterables. Uh, just basically defining it for myself so that I could understand it. Um, I wrote it all down and. Uh, it, it's kind of it's a document that basically defines what it what how you would stream um, in terms of like pull stream um, primitives like sinks and sources and and uh, and uh, transforms or duplex or whatever. Um, it was super useful to me because I was working on a pull request to switch libp 2 p web sockets to async iterables. Um, and I forked uh, pull ws, which is a kind of wrapper around the module WS, uh, but for pull streams, um, and made it async iterable -able. Uh, And uh, yeah, just thinking about like what a duplex is in term in in these terms. Um, yeah, just have a read, um, uh, and then that allowed me to kind of add sync and duplex support to the module, the async iterator to pull stream module, so we can convert async iterators to pull streams because we've now defined what what a sync is in terms of an async inter iterator and what a duplex is um, which is to be honest similar to what pull stream thinks they are basically so it's all good um so yeah like i said 085 is blocked again temporarily um but uh jacob has been working really hard to um to get another fix in uh to uh well, i'm sure he'll talk about it uh, in a bit but um but yeah uh, that's cool. So my next task, my top priority right now, is to finalise OKRs for the next quarter, which is started now. Um, I need to review that fix that I just mentioned. Uh, and people have been submitting pull requests to JSIPFS and the HTTP API client, and I haven't had a chance to review them yet. So I need to get on with that. Um, and then if all goes if all goes to plan, um, a zero thirty five release um, maybe this week. Dirk's been helping me. Um, chug through the uh, release checklist so that's that's good um, there's a whole lot less work for me to do towards that now so that is uh, super appreciated thank you um, uh, has anybody any questions for me all right cool thank you for listening <laughs> all right let's move on um, Volker you're up next can we have your update please 
So uh, my update is that I mostly spend time on JS IPLD API discussions. Um, yeah, there's not really an outcome yet, but just like ongoing discussions and yeah, just, and it's like, it's so many. So if you're interested, just go on the IPLD repositories and then you will probably find some issues and discussions there. And I'm not blocked. And next week I will, or this week I will work on um, the IPLD formats part. This is kind of part of the um, async iterators endeavor because, um, yeah, it's uh, the, the interface will be async await. And we kind of like stripped it down a bit from the original proposal to make, um, uh, make it easy, easier to agree on and move forward. And there's already a proposal on for the next API refactoring and we'll see how this goes. And then I hopefully, the, as the IPLD API um, got merged, hopefully this new API will land in UnixFS and in IPFS. The pull requests are done. They just need to be reviewed and just <laughs> and merged. Yeah, that's all I have. Any questions for Volker? Alex. When is the bike shedding going to stop? <laughs> Good question. Uh, probably never. <laughs> when JavaScript stops adding features, we can stop considering API changes. <laughs> um, yeah, I just really like to see the promise, uh, also the async await stuff emerge from the um, IPLD formats repo. Like since we got the, the main API stuff done, um, it's great. Yes, it's to basically the like the this is the, the, the reason for the for the um, what I call IPLD formats cleanup is to strip down the discussion so we don't keep bike shedding but just ship something with the async await stuff and then go from there. And that's what I will work on uh, this week. So it will ship. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, any other questions for Volker while we're here? Okay. Okay, there's lots of you, so it just takes me a while to scan through you all, by the way. <laughs> uh, cool, that's, that's Volker. Uh, Jacob, would you like to share your update with us, please? Yes. Uh, as Alan mentioned, I've been mostly working on performance for JSLPDP for the upcoming IPFS release. Um, Big issue that we're having there is the DHT is effective and we're discovering a lot of peers. Um, we were hitting issues where we'd discover like 30,000 peers with the node running for like 30 seconds. Uh, the problem with that is JS IPFS will try to dial every single one of them. Um, LibPDP doesn't like that. And so like right now we aren't, we weren't doing any real blocking in LibPDP. Um, there's no real queue management for that. Like it would just try to spam everything. So naturally the CPU uh, uh, would just hit 100% and things would crap out. So we've been working on making that uh, more manageable. Um, right now in LibP2P, everything is considered a dial. Even if you just want to like negotiate a protocol and just want to open a new stream, everything goes through dial, which isn't great. Um, and so we've been working on kind of breaking that up into like what are actual like protocol ne negotiations for creating new streams versus like what's necessary for the application and like what are like cold calls where you discover it appear and you're just going to connect to it um, as a mitigation to get IPFS out the door until we can make this better. Um, so a few PRs open for that um, and then be working on one last PR uh, for those cold calls. And then um, hopefully we should be able to get out that out the door this week and then start working on the long-term solution for those. Um, also be looking at working to review a old PR um, from Machi for the web RTC star refactor. Um, also need to do some final validation on a pull length prefixed PR that fixes empty streams and large sync streams. Um, that can cause the like max size or the full stack overflow issues. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. Questions? Dirk? 
Hey, uh, just a question about the DHT and dialing. Um, I think on the Go side, they limit the number of concurrent dials because there's a limited number of file descriptors. So I was wondering if you guys are taking account of that. Yeah, right now, like, JSLib B2B wasn't doing anything. It's not doing anything with file descriptors. And so this is like, the stuff we're doing now is like a, really a mitigation to until we can get to that level of um, actually do more of what Go's doing. Um, Stephen, do you want to chime in? I note that actually Go's implementation of the DHT is totally wrong. Um, so you should, like, if you haven't read the Eschademia and the Academia papers, you should read them. Uh, because, like, one of the reasons we had so many issues with dialing is that we were basically dialing everyone in the network, which also made content writing work. But this doesn't scale very well when your network grows. Uh, so, like, did you base it off of the Go DHT or the papers? So like, Vashko would probably need to uh, chime in for that. But so right now what happens is like the DHT will announce the peers and the DHT mm -hmm. isn't dialing all of them, but Go or IPFS is ultimately listening for new peer discovery. And every time if IPFS sees that there's a new peer, it will dial to it. Oh, it's, this is not for finding content in the DHT, it's just for finding other peers. This is just through peer discovery. So if you happen to find 30,000 peers, even if you don't dial to them, IPFS ultimately will attempt to dial up all of those. Okay, never mind. Sorry, I think we're on the pages. Yeah. But yeah, ultimately we need to have like, is lib P2P, JS lib P2P has the swarm they do files, file descriptor limiting. Um, and we don't have any of that right now, which is also new what we're trying to do with the queuing. Any other questions for Jacob? Cool, all right. If we're good to go on, we'll go on. Uh, up next is Hugo, Mr. Diaz. <laughs> Please, would you share your update with us? Yes. So, hi guys. Uh, I've been doing um, at least two of the um, bundle size or JS APFS repo bundle size pull requests are merged, as Alan already told you about. Um, there's still one left that it's a little bit more controversial. And we, we will probably will have uh, more discussions about it regarding the removing by default the IPLD formats only in the browser uh, and uh, teaching the docs how to add them. But we will uh, figure that out later. Uh, also, I've been debugging the view CLI setup for our view community and proto school. Uh, that's mostly uh, done. Um, the set immediate part is done. We already did all the sample requests. And it works. Uh, the readable part. Uh, uh, today I found the the source of the issue. Not. I don't think I found like the issue itself, but at least the source. Um, and it's amplex. <laughs> so. If I use the Jacob's uh, pull request using pull uh, amplex, it works perfectly. So it's a bit strange because we are using readable streams everywhere, both two and three, but uh, for some reason, or some reason on libp2p amplex, it basically vanishes some context uh, inside the, the class vanishes and it uh, throws. Um, uh, the second part of the view support is about uh, having it transpile the dependencies, which is a good thing, but that opens up a lot more issues uh, that are mostly related to viewing, not to our code. So this will be uh, split in two parts. I will finish the first one and then try to figure out the second one, but this one is more critical. 
also help debug the um, streams to pull stream, double declaration issues, and have a, a lovely time in Lisbon with all you guys, or most of you, doing some retro and some planning and some lunching and fooding and stuff like that. It was a great, great, a great time. Uh, next, I'll finish the view support uh, and the uh, IPLD formats uh, pull requests. And then I will start researching uh, IPNS over DNS uh, to see if it's a viable solution to implement this quarter instead of the HTTP proxy. Uh, but yeah, um, I'll, we'll see about it. It's in the research stage yet. So any of you any, has any questions? No? Okay. Um, I have a quick, hopefully a quick question. A uh, set media is just the problem that we're using set media and whatever's doing the, um, the bundling isn't adding a shim by default, right? Um, yes, basically we, we need to, well, sorry, get last part. Yeah, so we just need to use async set media or, or some other thing by default instead of expecting it to be there when it might not be there. Yeah, exactly. But, so the read yeah. or stream, what's the, like, what's the error that's like, what do you, what is the problem that, that you're seeing? If Basically, you <laughs> yes, I can. Basically, inside the uh, inside uh, Mplex, uh, we'll, you can see from the stack you get several streams going in there, being handled, uh, events being fired. But at some point, like after seven streams appearing to work perfectly. Uh, one of them, basically, the context, the, like the this of the class, oh. uh, inside one of the um, function calls uh, that, that's called in one of the events, basically a, a resume, the, the context that is injected in that function call is undefined. You know, uh, I have no idea why, because basically everything is like next tick, next tick, next tick. It's really hard to debug where the um, that uh, the that variable gets undefined. Uh, but it's yeah, really basically. Weird, but it sometimes works, but then yeah. it stops working. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, that was just for my own curiosity. I apologize. Uh, next up, then, if there's no other questions for Hugo. No. Okay. Uh, it is Dirk. Would you like to share with us? So Dirk is Dirk is new to the JS team, um, and uh, this is his first first update. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, so yeah, my my first kind of order of business was to go meet a bunch of people and eat some really good food in uh, Lisbon. So I think my proposal is we do that every week. But uh, it was really nice to really nice to meet everyone. Um. And then in terms of actually doing work, uh, I was doing some DHT fixes last week. Uh, I was doing some testing and trying out examples for the release, working on the awesome endeavor. That's the one for converting callbacks to async await. And next, I'm going to do the same thing for uh, the TCP uh, library that Alan's been working on for WebSockets to convert that to kind of streaming API. Any questions? Cool, thank you. Uh, let's move on to Alex. Would you like to share with us your update, please? Hello. So uh, there was a PR outstanding on um, uh, handling subshards of subshards to get created in one hand, uh update in MFS. Uh, I merged that uh, and there was the Q2 planning for um, uh, Joe's hobby person for practice managers in Lisbon, uh, uh, you know, everyone was at, that's a lot of fun. Uh, I started, after we were talking about Badger um, as a data store for Go, I started messing around with um, like a C uh, native module for JavaScript to um, to call out to Badger. And it, yeah, it looks like, I don't know, it's kind of possible. Um, I had code quite happily round tripping from JavaScript to Go and back again. Um, 
yeah, so I'm going to look at that a bit more uh, in the spare time, but I've got a bunch of weird errors that I don't understand that are to do, a lot to do with native modules, but that's just my lack of knowledge. So it's going to be fun figuring out what the problem there is. Um, I, um, I, want to, I really want to get the async await stuff done uh, for MFS and UNIXFS. Um, so it's basically just a bunch of IPLD interaction. So that stuff getting merged for IPLD itself for the DAG API is great. So I can I can you know do that bit, but I need the um, the DAG PB and raw stuff to kind of settle. So the formats basically API needs to settle as well before I can really finish that off. Like I could wrap everything uh, and then you know unwrap it later on when the API becomes available, but I'd rather not um, after all the kind of the performance stuff that we did uh, around you know not uh, having crazy amounts of async and you know allocating buffers and that kind of stuff. It, it seems a bit, it'd be like a backward step to go and, and just artificially introduce you know, more stuff that could be bad. So I'd rather not do that um, if at all possible. Uh, there's a problem with reading sharded directories via the gateway. Uh, I did a little quick hack to fix it. Um, Lyra suggested fixing it in the upstream library. It's like, well, okay, fine. Um, so I'm doing it properly, fixing it in the upstream library, uh, which is great because it actually removed a whole bunch of code. Um, which is cool. Uh, some people have been opening some issues against MPO and IPFS, which is great. Uh, so I need to do a bit of triage against that um, and you know, figure out what I can do to make it better. Uh, and then I'd like to get back onto adding the missing HTTP endpoints to IPFS. All right, that's going to be me. Any question? Nice, thank you. Cool. Next up is Zane, but he's not here today. Uh, it looks like he's been doing some async await work as well, which is great. Uh, cleaning the lingering things, CI. Okay. P what is P-Town? Anyway. Okay. Look, I think. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so uh, questions. Uh, oh, okay. Uh -huh. Heard a paper issue who, worth revisiting. Uh, so, oh, okay, right. Yes, uh, take a look at the conversation there for kind of uh, locking our dependencies so that the Babel thing that I mentioned earlier doesn't happen again. Um, we can all maybe stop it from happening again, which would be really nice because it was. It's slightly annoying when it does. All right, cool. Uh, so we've got no minutes left for cross-team updates, but we, if you are still here, then um, uh, then you can. You are welcome to leave. But if uh, Lydell, Lydell and Terry would like to give us your quick cross-team updates, then I will definitely listen to you. <laughs> Lydell, if you go first, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, I will be very brief. There's a new. Uh release of our browser extension. It's a perfect day for pushing release to the stable channel. So uh, just um, some visual re refresh. Uh, context actions are available on DNS link websites, even if you disable uh, the redirect to local gateway. Uh, we ship new web UI, which has a very cool uh, fixes and improvements of, uh, of file manager. Uh, I'll link some details if you are interested in them. And there's like per website to redirect opt-out and there is also like a global redirect opt-out. So you can, uh, you have more control over uh, redirect to local gateway without the need of uh, suspending entire extension. Uh, and Big thanks for submitting translations for everyone who submitted translations. Uh, yep, so that landed uh, to Firefox and Chrome Store, uh, works with Brave, Opera. Uh, I have uh, some ongoing, uh, I have some ongoing uh, development right now uh, related to Brave, uh, but that's all I will say for now. I expect some interesting updates in the future. Thank you. Cool, thank you, Lido. Uh, uh, all right, uh, any real quick questions for Lido? Okay, uh, Terry, you're up. Yeah, so 
Uh, I was really happy to be with folks in Lisbon last week, wherever we were. Um, and I had drafted the roadmap before then, but was able to make a couple of quick adjustments to it while we were there. So uh, I've dropped the links in so you can spend some time on your own looking at this, but Proto School, which is a community for learning about decentralized web concepts in which the bulk of the content right now is about IPFS, now has its own roadmap, sort of guiding principles. If I were gonna direct you to one thing here, it would be these in terms of uh, how we want to structure our content moving forward. What are the things that are going to make this stay as sort of a cohesive experience that makes sense as it grows um, as we try to accept contributions from all over. And I'm looking forward to working with some of you on content specifically designed for IPFS camp that f happens to fit into the, the Proto School Roadmap. So um, looking forward to that. There's also a uh, link there specifically um, Q2 OKRs, if anyone's interested in those. And I'm excited. Diogo's uh, getting on board to help me with a lot of this, and some of the other folks on the GUI team are going to be pitching in, so it should be a very productive quarter for us. Very cool. Uh, anyone? Does anyone have any questions for Terry? Uh, wait, if I can't see everyone. Oh, wait, there we are. Okay. No, no questions. All right, cool. Thank you, Terry. Um, all right, then we're three minutes over. Uh, thank you for sticking with us if you did. Uh, and um, that's it. Goodbye. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, it's been a rad time. We'll see you next week for another exciting round of what I did last week, what I'm going to do this week, and what I got blocked on. Uh, and also cross team updates, which is really fun. Um, bye, everyone. Nice. Bye. Bye.